everybody. This is Brother Calvin Willis from the Lynette Church of Christ. I'm getting ready to give you your morning inspiration and vitamin. Get ready and take it. This is chapter 1. Your Bible says, Now it came to pass that when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Now we gotta understand that text right there because there was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of false teaching behind that text. A lot of people teach that angels came back and made have a relationship with, with the dogs. But I just want to debunk that right off the bat. Because when you look at the Bible in Matthew the 27, the second chapter, the, the angels cannot be given in hand of marriage, nor can they marry. So let, let's just kill that right off the bat. Because that's what people teach. The angels came down, all the angels came down, and, 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 and they made it with the women, and then there were giants. That's how we got to that. Because Look at verse number 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, and yet his days shall be 120 years. And there were giants. Well, well, well. See, I'm a word man. I have to go look up those words. I know it said giant. And human mind, we think, ooh, these big old dudes. Look up the word. All it's going to mean is fallen. Fallen ones. F-A-L-L-E-N. Fallen ones. Fallen ones. And when you take the Bible in its context, let's look at from the beginning. From the beginning, that was Adam and Eve, two people. They had children, Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel. He killed his brother. Then, God brought forth another man by the name of Seth. And I need for you to understand this. That when the Bible runs from like one verse to another verse, that may be Hundreds of years in the Old Testament. Because remember now, they were men were living to be 900. Methuselah was the oldest of man in the Bible. 900 and some odd years old. Because you just can't take the time like our time and put it in the same context. So there was incest. Yes, there was incest. Adam and Eve had more kids and they began to multiply in this world. They began to multiply. They had all, they had other kids. Their family had kids. Their family had kids. And so the earth was full. It was full. But then in Genesis chapter 4, there was a man by the name of Lamech. Lamech took the first two wives that you're going to find out in the Bible. Wherever you see that was the first man that took two wives in the Bible. <coughs> yeah. And he was a bad joker. You know that? He was, Lamech was tough because he came from Cain. <coughs> he came from Cain. That was his yeah, yeah, he came from Cain. Yeah, just read the genealogy. You can start from verse 16 all the way down. You'll see he, took, he came from Cain. But then you'll read all over, you'll see Seth genealogy as well. And, and so the man was a bad boy. He he most about what he did. If, if you start at verse number twenty three, Lamech said to his wife Ada and Zillah, "Hear my voice, wife of Lamech. Listen to my speech. I have killed a man. 
for wounding me. He was a young man from hurting me. If Cain can be a bed seven folds, then lament seventy folds. Look at his mindset, y'all. Look, look at his mindset. So you'll see in verse number 25, Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son, and his name said, and, and God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom came killed. So, Seth was born a son called Enosh. Then man began to serve God. So, you got a righteous side and an unrighteous side. Amen. You got a good side Amen. and an evil side. So now, when you get to Genesis chapter 6, there were several hundred years that had transpired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason that the word got so bad, Brother Butch, is that the good side started cohabitating with the bad side. Sons of God and the daughters of God started messing with the daughters of men and they, they started marrying one another. This is why I teach, and I will not back off of it. A Christian don't have no business marrying another Christian. I know it ain't pleasant because a lot of them did it, and, 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 and back then, no day and time. You know, the, the, the older preacher taught what they knew. And I'm not, I'm not casting any dispersion on those men. They taught what they knew. Man. They, they taught what they thought was right. But they allowed the people of God to marry non-Christians. And, 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 and chaos happened. Yes, sir. Chaos happened. Now, I don't care if you married a non-Christian. Everything going hunk of dough. When judgment day is. Y'all gonna set me. I need to say that one more time. I don't care if you married a non-Christian, everything going fine in y'all relationship. When judgment day get here, there's gonna be a separation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, y'all ain't going to the same place. Mm -mm. Y'all, you're not going to the same place. So you won't be able to see that person. Yeah, you'll see them again that across that great gulf that's you're going to be able to see them on the other side. Yes, but they're not going to be able to come over where you are at. Not going to be a sad day. So, so those of you who are married to non-believers, get this, get this. I'm not telling you to go divorce your husband or wife. You stuck. You stuck. That's all I'm going to tell you. You stuck. You stuck. So, we see here that the cause of this <coughs> sinful act here in Genesis chapter 6 watch this. There was giants in the earth and, and, and you look up the number word, giant, it means men over the now, very powerful, strong men. That's what it means. <coughs> so afterwards, the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. And those were mighty men who were of old, men of renown. You see that word? That means giant, powerful, very strong men who had fallen. Who had fallen. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that it in every intent, intent of the thought of his heart was only evil every night and again. In other words, when they got up in the morning, guess what was on their mind? Evil. 
When, when they walk through the day, guess what's on their mind? Evil. Evil. Mm. I can imagine. Mm. But you accidentally stepped on my toe and I took my spear back there that day and killed you. Mm -hmm. Even after you said you were sorry. Mm. That they were continuously doing evil things. In other words, when God looks at the earth, he sees that there is no redemption for these people. There is no changing for these people. Their minds, because it's, it says the intent of their thoughts, it's in their mind. Remember now, we know the heart consists of three things. Your intellect, that's your thoughts. Your emotion, that's how you feel. And then your will, that's what you will do. And it consists of your heart, which is your soul. Our soul, brothers and sisters, is corrupt. We can't, we can't trust our soul. Mm -mm. You cannot trust your soul. The only thing that is able to, to, to rise above your soul is your spirit. If you allow the spirit to control the soul, then it will change your life. But if not, if not, you're going to be doing some wicked and some crazy, some low down, some dirty stuff. Because your soul is messy. Mm -hmm. And so when God looked at this world back then, he saw, that's all he saw that every day, nothing but evil. Nothing but evil. And it came from the generation of Cain. It came from the generation of Cain. And, and, and guess what now? Cain was angry because he didn't do what God told him to do. So he got mad with his brother. And a lot of times when we get ticked off, it's usually when somebody corrects us about something that we want to do and it's wrong. And they correct us, and we get ticked off about it. And we either cuss them out, we, 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 we will fight them, or we will leave, get mad, and don't come back. But when you look at it in reality, whose fault is it? When you do something that is contrary to the will of God, it is my job as a man of God to say something to you. And if I don't say anything to you, I don't love you. Amen. Because you remember what love is. Love is not an emotion. Love is not like. I don't have to like you, but I got to love you. According to God's standard. And here's what love is. Let me help you. Love is righteously and passionately doing what's best for the other person. All right, all right. I'm going to say that one more time. Love is righteously and passionately doing what's best for the individual. All right. Now, just in case y'all don't understand, Everybody got little kids. You told little Bubba, don't you go outside that road and play that road because he, he, he might get hit with a car. And you go in the house and Bubba stay right here in the yard. Stay right here in the yard. Don't go outside. That's what I told my grandson. I said, don't you go outside that road one day. Stay in this yard. He looked across the road. He saw little Bubba on the other side of the road. Big Papa, he's my best friend. <laughs> he ain't your best friend. You 
number three. In Genesis 6, it says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive in man forever, for he's indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. You see that? That's a period of grace. That is a period of grace before God passed judgment. Say that one more time. The hundred and twenty years was a period of grace Amen. before God would destroy mankind. In other words, He gave them some time to see what they're gonna come. To see what they're gonna repent. To see what they're gonna get right. A hundred and twenty years God gave me a long time to get right. And so when we look at Genesis uh, chapter 6 and verse number 8, and, and Noah found grace, now God get ready to do something. Verse number nine said the genealogy of Noah was a he was a just man, a perfect man in his generation. Noah walked with God in the midst of all that evil. In the midst of all that evil, you had somebody still walking with God. So don't tell me that you can't live right if you want to. You know, I just can't get it. I work with people that's evil. I work with people that smoke and drink. I, I, I live. It's in my family. They don't care nothing about God. And, and I can't help it. Like, I get involved. Oh, Lord. Amen. Amen. You know the Bible said? Noah was a just man. Perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted the way on the earth. Now, when the Bible says all flesh, y'all got to know, it doesn't include Noah and his family. Because the Bible says he walked with him. Right. Now the period of grace has ended. Let's see what God can do. He's tired. He's tired. Amen. See, God gets tired, y'all. Y'all need to know that. You, you, you can sneak, hide, pee, roll, ride any way you want. Amen. After a while, God's going to get And God is going to pass judgment. Amen. He's going to get tired. And people get mad with God when God gets tired of you disrespecting him. When God gets tired of you who wear the name of a Christian living, wear that name of a Christian living any kind of way, God going to get tired of that mess. Amen. And he's going to pass judgment. So, verse number 13, God says to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through, me, through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Notice, I will destroy them with the earth. I will destroy them with the earth. use what they dwell in to destroy them? How, God? How? Watch it. He said, now, make your seven ark of gold wood. Make room in the ark, cover it inside and outside the pitch, and this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, and it shall with, 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 with,
you shall make a window for the ark, and you shall find, finish it to a cubit from above, and set the door of the ark inside. You shall make it with lower, second, and third deck. Lower, second. See, that's three. God has always been dealing with one and three. Y'all see that? He's always been dealing in one and three. Those numbers are very important. One and three. That's how God been dealing with. Now, and behold, watch this. I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth. Amen. Watch this. To destroy from under heaven all flesh which is in the breath of life. Now all flesh is animal flesh. Oh, they got the breath of life. Mess up some of y'all dead, don't you? Yeah. They got a soul too. Amen. Ain't that right, brother Burr? Amen. <laughs> Amen. I've got a soul too. Amen. But you know the difference? Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 21. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 21. One go up and one go back. Amen. That's the difference. One go up, yeah. and the other one go down. See which one goes up, and see which one goes down. Amen. Are we just having Bible study tonight, today? See, you got to understand God. When you read Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 21, it tells you that man's spirit goes up, yeah. and animal spirit goes down. That's the difference. Do you love the field? Yeah. That's the difference. The difference is that when God created Adam, he created Adam. But when he created man, he created man from the dust of the ground. And he breathed in the nostril of man. He didn't breathe in the nostril of Adam. He breathed in the nostril of man, but he did not breathe in the nostril of Adam. He put himself in us. Amen. Amen. God put himself in us. His DNA in us. He didn't put it in that. That's why we're different. Thought y'all need to know that. So God said, but I, I, verse number 18. But I will establish my covenant with you, and when you shall go into the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your son wives with you, and every living thing of all flesh you shall bring to of every sort into the, the ark. Watch this now to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Oh, I gotta say this one more time. Right. Y'all get that? I, I, I don't know if y'all got that. They shall be male and female. Now, this God now is preserving the earth. Not only is he preserving humanity, he's preserving the beast. Amen. Now, he knows what he did from the beginning. But God is now getting ready to destroy the whole world. And he's going to make sure that the whole world Again. He want to make sure the whole world procreate again. So he says, male and female. Just in case y'all don't understand that, he shall be male and female. Of the birds after their kind. Of the animals after their kind. Of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind. Watch this. Two 
of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. And, it's, and you shall take for yourself all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and shall be food for you for them. And Noah did all according to God command. Yes. Chapter 7. Then the Lord said to Noah, come to the ark. You and all your household, because I've seen that you are a righteous. You are righteous before me in this generation. And you shall take with you seven of each every clean animal. A male and a two each of animals that are unclean. Male and come on y'all. Also seven each bird of the air, male to keep the species alive on the face of the earth. For after seven more days y'all see that seven Seven more days I will call it to rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I made. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was six hundred and six hundred years old when the flood water. Y'all see how the earth got full of how many, how the, what, the longest somebody I know is 103 years old. That's the longest somebody I know. No, 600. <laughs> and look how many generations in that family. Amen. For that person, that's 103. Amen. Now imagine every, every family living to be 600 years old from generation to generation. It's astounding how many. So the Bible said, so Noah and his sons and his wife and son went into the ark because of the waters of the, of the flood. Clean, every clean animal. They all went into the water. Verse number 10. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood was on the earth. And in 600, 600 years of Noah's life and in this, the month, second month, the seventh day of the month, on all that all the fountains of the great deep was broken up, and the wind windows of heaven was opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. Amen. 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 Now, God destroyed. The whole world. Why? S I N. They destroyed the whole world. And I read somewhere, I said it won't be water. It won't be water next time. It's going to be Now, if God destroyed the whole world, then. Because of sin. Look, what, look at America. Amen. Look at America. Look at America, y'all. Look, 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 look what's happened to her. During, I believe in 1965, 67, when Linda Bain and John became president, they started, they started what they call this, this they, they started the, the, the welfare movement. Uh -huh. When they thought it was a good idea to take young women <coughs> that had became impregnated by men mm -hmm. and put them into house, mm -hmm. apartment house. Amen. And they said, the male cannot come in. He got pregnant, he brought a child by he can't be a part of that family. Amen. They took him out. Mm -hmm. 
Now, sin begat sin. Amen. They weren't married to him. Amen. Am I right? Now, they, 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 they thought it was a good idea. But they took the strong man. And anytime you break, take the strong man out of the house, so you come in right. and he binds the house. So instead of all young women doing bad, they raised up another generation, a single parent. Oh, 
Oh, it's all on the internet, y'all. Mm -hmm. They congratulating two women getting married. Yeah, I know about it. <laughs> and some of our folks in here that call themselves Christian gave them their amen. Oh, my God. I said it, and I ain't going to take it back. Amen. It's wrong for a Christian to congratulate two women getting married. It's wrong for a Christian to congratulate two men getting married. God has never sanctioned it, nor he ordained it. Amen. And for us, the children of God, give our stuff for approval. Listen, brothers and sisters, that is a slap in God's face. Amen. Preach, preach, preach. Yeah, you can talk about it. You can put it on the internet and say all that other stuff about me all you want to. But I do know when judgment they get here. All right, man. Called God did not ordain it, nor He sanctioned it. Do you hear me? Amen. When He wanted the earth to procreate, He put male and female in every kind of animal. You don't catch a dog, a male dog messing with a male dog. You don't catch a male cat messing with a, a male cat. Only somebody do that junk as human being. Right. It is a sad. God don't approve of it. Nope. Now I'll say this and I'll say this emphatically. God does not love, hate the sin sinner. He hates the sin. He does not hate the person. He hates the sin that the person is doing. That's what he hates. So if you are a practicing homosexual, you need to stop practicing. Amen. You need to stop practicing. Amen. Because you can't be saved practicing homosexuality. Amen. And if you're, well, let me add that you're practicing lying. All right now. You need to stop lying. You need to stop. Amen. Amen. Yeah, if you're practicing thinking, right. you need to Amen. stop still. Because God look at you just like He look at the homosexual. All right. Both all y'all in sin. So don't, 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 don't sit on that categorize just one scene. Right. And you sit on that line and, well, I don't have nothing to do with homosexual. But you're a big lion on the face of this earth. Amen. All right, now. Amen. You ain't no different. Amen. You're going to be judging like the homosexual. You're going to be judging. That's true. So I'm trying to get y'all to understand that. Yes, so here we see God, God, brothers and sisters, mm. Mm. made a covenant. In Genesis chapter 8, verse number 20, the Bible said, Noah built an altar to the Lord. And he took every clean animal and every, every bird and offered burnt offering on the altar. And the Lord smelled the soothing of Rome. And then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although, watch this, although his imagination of man's heart is evil. From his youth, nor will I again destroy this God made a covenant with right. Saying, I won't do this anymore. Because I know the heart of man. You can't trust the soul of man. That's why I find it hard for you to stop doing certain things. Because hard is God only fixed one way for you to change your life. That is, he must dwell in your heart. He must dwell in your life. You see, 
The ark is a type of the New Testament church. I need to say that one more time. The ark is a type of the New Testament church. And I ask people today, how many ark was that? One ark. I ask people today, how many doors that was on that ark? One door. And I hear Jesus say, I am the door. You got to come. You got to come. How many windows was on that ark? I hear Jesus say, I am the light of the world. On that ark. How did they get saved? By water. But it had to be in the ark to get saved. But the water picked up the ark. Floated all those that were inside the ark. On to salvation. See, I'm trying to get you to understand. God don't have one way to save man. God has one church. That is the church of Christ. How do I get in the church of Christ? I must be baptized into the church of Christ. Which is why salvation is at. There is no church that a man can be saved in but the church of Christ. And I dare anybody to put on it. Because you got to prove what you're saying. You just can't tell me I don't believe you preach out. You got to take that Bible, take scripture with scripture, and refute whatever I just said up here this morning. I'm telling you, God don't have a one way to save your soul. And that is in his church. And it's not but one. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 4 says that one body, one faith, one hope, one baptism. That one baptism puts you into the one body. What is the body? Colossians 1.18 says the body is the church. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23 says the church is the body. And who is the head of? Christ. Amen. Christ. He don't have one. Amen. So, God gave that generation a new beginning. A new beginning. And I stop here today to say to you all, we are here in 2019. 2019. 2019. And I don't know where you have made a resolution or not. I don't know. That. But I do know. I do know, brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, that you have been, if you're a member of the body of Christ, you have been called out of the world. Amen. You have been called out of the world. Do you hear me? You have been called out of the world. And so if you've been called out of the world, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse number 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a New creation. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. You see, you're a new creature. In Christ. This world we live in. But this world is not our home. We just live in here. We're, we're passing through. There's a better place somewhere, y'all. Better home somewhere, y'all. And I hear Paul say in 2 Corinthians 6 and verse number 17. He said this, brothers and sisters, come out from among them. Be separated, says the Lord. Don't touch what is unclean. And I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be a son and daughter, says the Lord. God tells you to come out from the world. Don't be a part of the world. If you're going to change this Some of the old people that I used to hang with that didn't do me no good. I'm gonna let them go. Amen. I'm gonna let them go. Because I have a new life in Christ. I'm a new creature. I'm a new person. And you ought to act like it. You ought to act like it. That's the wrong, that's the problem with the church now. 
We got too many people blaspheming the name of Jesus. They dogging his name out. Trashing his name. Amen. By the lifestyle that they're living. The people that they're affiliating themselves with. They're trashing the name of God. Some of you all will leave here today and you're going to go right back into that same sinful world and start doing the same thing. Here today, I'm telling you now, just like God got tired of doing it, he's going to get tired of us now. And when he passed judgment, what you going to do? What you going to do then? When God passed you. You know those people, Mark Noah, he preached the same sermon for 120 years. They laughed at him, they mocked him, they talked about it, but Noah kept on preaching. But when the time came, they said, open up the door, no, we believe you, we believe you, no, no, we ain't never seen rain, it's a rain now, no, 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 I can't. I can't. God closed it. Who am I to stop God in general? You had all this truth. You mocked me. You talked about me. You ridiculed me. Now you want me to pray. You can't. Because there's just some things. God wants you. When God passed judgment, read Jeremiah 13 chapter and 7 chapter. God told those people, don't, 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 don't pray for them. You fed not pray for. When you mock God, you want me to come pray for you? No. Now you know why I don't do what I don't do. Because I know what I don't do. The Christian mock God. He just refused to come to worship. Refused to do what God wanted him to do. Then you want me to come and change God's judgment? Amen. Let me tell you something. God put the preacher in the church. Whether y'all like it or not. Romans said, How can they hear without a woman? A preacher. I know you read your Bible. I read mine. But God put the preacher in the church. He put him in there. Yeah. He put the elders in the church for a reason. He put the deacons in the church for a reason. But God put them there. Who you or I to change what God did. Amen. Amen. You might not like it. But right now, I'm the man of God in the church that God put me in. But he used man through the providence of God to put me in. And I hear a lot of people don't like that. But that's okay. Because you don't understand God's promise. God put people where he needs them to be. Whether you like it or not, it is God's doing and not mine. So I thank you if you're here this morning and you're not a Christian, not a member of the Church of Christ, you need to be comfortable. You say, well, preacher, how do I do that? By hearing the gospel. What is the gospel? I've just preached it to you. I told you the gospel is the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Those, those, that's, those are the gospel in fact. It is a fact that he died. It is a fact that he was buried. It is a fact that he rose. Amen. But did you not know that gospel has a command that must be obeyed? Amen. You're commanded to hear the gospel. You're commanded to believe the gospel. You're commanded to repent of your sin. You're commanded to confess to Jesus the Christ. And you're commanded to go down there and work the grave of baptism. If you don't follow those commands, you can't be saved. Because God put them in the book. I didn't put them. God put the stipulation for you to be saved. 
hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. That's what God did. So if you're here and you're not a Christian, Father knows my steps. Come up, give me your hand, confess that Jesus the Christ, we put you in the water grave of baptism, and God will add you to the New Testament church. If you're here this morning, You need to resolve it in yourself. You know, Brother Willis, I think I, I want to start a new beginning. As I look at my life in 2018, I didn't do everything that I knew I could have done. I wasn't living the way that I knew I could be. I had migrated myself back into the world. I had, I had put my mind back into the world. And when your mind goes back into the Word, it's just a little while before your body goes back into the Word. That's the true Israel problem. The Bible clearly tells you that the true Israel problem is that their heart, they were out of the womb, but their heart was back in the church. And some of us, we are here this morning in the church, but our heart, I have given you your morning inspirational body. So now take a sip and you be blessed. You want to worship to be real, not just emotions that we feel. So when we sing the songs we sing and we bring it offering as we bow before your feet.